Alright guys, so I had uh, someone ask me to do a video on my pressurized CO2 system. Um, just, you know, all the aspects of it, the equipment, and I understand why someone would ask that question because it's a really confusing topic, and it was to me when I first uh, started researching it. So we'll start off down here under the, in the cabinet, where I have the regulator. Now this is from Greenleaf Aquariums. It has um, a lot of nice stuff on it. These two gauges here. Uh, this one has the pressure inside the tank, so it'll show how much gas is left uh, when you need to fill it up or get a new tank on here. Um, this knob here adjusts the working pressure, which is like the output pressure, the pressure in your line, and that's displayed on this gauge here. Since I have an, uh, an atomic um, diffuser, it requires at least 30, 35, um, what is that, PSI of pressure. And this really hasn't changed since I filled up the, the tank. I have it attached to these 24 ounce paintball tanks. Uh, I got one at Sports Authority, one of my, or two of them I got off Amazon. So I have three total. So I really don't have to go and fill any of them up for quite a while. This one has lasted me almost a month already, and it um, hasn't gone down. At least this gauge hasn't uh, much from what I've noticed. Built-in bubble counter right there. And that simply is a visual, gives you a visual idea of um, how much CO2 you're uh, putting through the tank. And check valve built-in check valve right here um, a lot of the, the regulators don't come with that so that's a nice feature and this is a solenoid this black area gets a little hot um, it has a cord coming out of it and I have that plugged into a timer right here you definitely need a timer uh, separate from your lights so I have two timers one for my lights one for my CO2 because CO2 comes on at least an hour before the lights come on and that's important because um, when the lights first come on the plants are all competing for that CO2 and uh, if there's low amounts of CO2 or if the CO2 uh, starts off kind of low and then as you as the day goes on it gets really high and you have those fluctuating levels you're going to get uh, blackbird algae and all sorts of other problems with your balance so it's important to get your CO2 up to par before the lights come on. I have them come on like an hour and a half before. And I have it turn off about half an hour, 45 minutes before the lights turn off. So you don't need to be running it um, to, the, to the end of the light cycle. It can be turned off about like an hour before if you want. Um, and then I don't run it at night. Some people have experimented with that and it's it's really not very beneficial in any way um, so it's just kind of a waste and you risk gassing your fish especially with the pressurized CO2 where you can get pretty high concentration of the CO2 in your water uh, so that's the timing aspect we went over this this is CO2 tubing um, so it's not regular airline tubing this is specifically for CO2 and uh, it's able to you know keep the pressure handle the pressure from the, the regulator and all of that came with this um, paintball regulator from Greenleaf Aquariums which is a really nice system definitely recommend that they have great customer service and all of that now we have the tube that continues all the way up here and I have it positioned uh, right underneath my power head you can see this is the um, I think it's like the 55 millimeter uh, atomic diffuser from Greenleaf Aquariums with the built-in check valve which is right in this area and we get these really small bubbles which is really nice 
and you can see most of them get pretty small before they hit the surface and it helps to have this in a, a good area of flow in your tank to disperse the CO2 and I have it so the bubbles get knocked down even further and it just increases the time that the bubbles are in the water so you get a higher diffusion rate and you won't have to inject as much CO2 in the long run which will save you money and uh, it's just a better way of just a better way of doing it uh, last part of the system it's kinda hard to see I have so many plants now let's see if I can zoom in you can kinda see it back there it's the drop checker the little glass ball with the fluid in there yeah you kinda see it there now that's the nano drop checker from Greenleaf Aquariums. It's made by Cal Aqua Labs, which uh, is a company that makes a lot of nice glassware. So they make uh, all sorts of stuff for aquariums. But one of the things they make are the drop checkers. And that's an important aspect in some ways. Um, it gives you a rough idea of the concentration of CO2 in your water. It's definitely not the most accurate thing. And I, I don't recommend using it as the um, as your main guide when you're trying to dial in your CO2 because when you first get your system uh, that's what you're going to be wanting to, you want to dial it in as soon as possible um, and really the only way is through experimentation and observation of your fish and plants um, Tom Barrow always recommends that you uh, use your fish as a guide and uh, turn it up as slowly and keep increasing the level of CO2 and then as you see your fish get a little more sluggish or they're gasping for air you obviously want to turn it down and uh, so they're so the fish are more comfortable and that'll kind of tell you where the maximum level of uh, CO2 or safe levels of CO2 is for your tank and that's where you want to keep it at at, a, um, at that constant level as high as possible um, and usually the drop checker is going to be a couple hours behind I think from what your actual levels of CO2 are currently because it takes a little while for the solution inside of that ball to uh, turn the correct color um, right now it's blue because they just turned the lights on and the CO2 just turned on like an hour ago so uh, it'll eventually turn green and then yellow is when it's higher than 30 uh, ppm for the CO2 levels and that's where I keep it above 30 most of the time or at least that's what the drop checker says but most of the time the fish are okay and plants are doing really well uh, I can't think of anything else that goes along with the CO2 um, if you have any questions about some other brands that I recommend um, usually the Aquatech regulators and uh, CO2 equipment in general from them is pretty good. Um, paintball tanks I wouldn't recommend for anything larger than like a 29 gallon maybe a 20 gallon would be the biggest you want to use that if, for your tank size otherwise you're gonna want a, a full-size regulator and like five or ten pound tanks because those will last you a lot longer and it will be cheaper in the long run because you won't have to refill uh, your tanks as often. So, uh, yeah, I think that's all I have for you for today. If you have any questions or if you want to see any other videos um, about the CO2 and all that, just leave it in the comments below. And thanks for watching.